Welcome to the first episode of the Time Vets Poker Blog. I'm Tyler, and today I'm going to go over a session I played while on a long trip in Florida earlier this year. I have a bunch of footage from this trip, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Hopefully, in the process of analyzing and going over each hand, I can become a better poker player to eventually play with some of the best players in the world. I hope you guys enjoy the journey. So let's get to it. First hand, under the gun plus one, opens to 15. We look down at a premium hand, the old 10-9 offsuit. So... I end up making the flat call, see if maybe we could see a flop for cheap. Sure enough, a big blind makes a flat call, and we go to a flop three ways. Flop comes 10-jack-8 rainbow, giving us middle pair and an open-ended straight draw. I'm liking the flop. Uh, it's pretty good for us, especially in position. I think I have a lot of equity multi-way. The big blind checks, the initial raiser, C bets for 25. I figure he's doing this with pretty much all of his under the gun plus one range. I make the flag fall and the big blind folds. The turn comes the seven, which gives me the straight and the initial raiser checks. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get some money in this pot. I bet 45 trying to get value from ace king or Ace Queen, maybe maybe Ace Jack with top pair. Hands that are looking to continue, but haven't quite hit it. Maybe pocket sixes or fives or something. So the river comes a king. The initial raiser checks the river, and I bet 65, thinking I'm value betting my hand. And then he goes ahead and puts in the re-raise to 150. I tank for a few seconds, and I run through all the possible scenarios of what kind of hands he could have, and I finally end up thinking, well, the only hand he's doing this with is ace-queen. It's better if you listen to get a feel for my processing. Ace-queen? Ace-queen, I call. Oh, yeah. I got a straight too. <laughs> As you can see, my thought process was quick. I eliminated all hands down to one. Since there was only one type of hand that would take this line, I quickly deduced that my equity was way too high to fold. Oh, the pain. Next hand, we're dealt ace deuce off. We decided to limp. Folds around to the button who opens the 25. He's obviously doing this with all his range. With the limber and the blinds, seems like a straightforward call. Flop comes 3-5 king with two hearts. The aggressor C bets 25. We float the gutter one time, try to see if we can smash it on the turn. The turn comes a 10 of clubs, and our one time is no good. He fires for 70, and we aren't going to give him two streets with a gutter, so we lay it down. And we're reminded how painful it is to play middling or small aces out of position. Moving on, our stack is dwindling, but then we look down at ace king off in the low jack. Under the gun opens for 20. We put in the re raise to 65, folds around, and he makes the call. Ace? 55? 55. Flop comes queen jack seven, two clubs. Under the gun checks, we bet 80. He pauses for a second and then says, all in. Maybe we call here. I'm not that deep, but I lay it down, hopefully to fight another day. In the very next hand, we get ace king off again. This time we're under the gun plus one. Under the gun opens to $20. 50. 
I 3-bet to $50, it folds around to under the gun, and he makes the call. The flop comes 10-8-4, it goes check-check. Turn comes a queen, it goes check-check. River comes a 3, it goes check-check. And under the gun tables, ace-3. The next, the very next hand, again, our stack size is now only $107 from the very poor play in the last hand. And we get ace-queen, this time under the gun. So I don't want to raise this. I'm pretty much capped in my range, and I'd have to probably put in the call all in no matter what. So I limp for five dollars. Okay. We end up going five players to the flop. Mm -hmm. Flop comes ace ten seven. The small blind bets ten, big blind folds. I call, the button calls. The turn is a offsuit six, the small blind bets twenty-five. I'll just let you guys see it. Oh, two pair, huh? Oh, in a boat on the river. <laughs> so in five hands, we went from what we brought to the table, a little over 500, down to uh, broke. It's been a painful start to the trip so far. But hey, we didn't come all the way to Florida to give up after only one buy-in. We go to the wall of shame and pull out another $500. The first few hands back go pretty quickly. Uh, we get pocket tens, open, no callers. Okay. Take it down. Uh, pocket twos, flat call in the big blind, set mine, we don't hit, we fold. Queen king off, we flat, call in the small blind. I forget what happened, but I'm pretty sure I hit a pair and took it down to showdown. Small pot though. On the button, we were dealt deuce three off. We limped. Everyone checked to me on the flop, so I threw out a bet of 15 and everyone folds. Then, the next notable hand, we're dealt jack eight of hearts. I don't have any notes for it, but fortunately, it goes our way. It looks like I put the opponent in a tough spot on the river and took down a pretty sizable pot around 125, uh, putting us just over 600 on our second buy-in. Oh, go card dead for a while. Fold around a few orbits. Folding. Holding. Lots of holding. Eventually, we look down at pocket sevens in the hijack. Under the gun plus one opens the 25, I flat, and the big blind flats. We get a dream flop with jack, five, seven, two spades. The early opener bets $40, and we put in a small raise to 110, trying to get any weak flush draws behind me to fold, or potentially induce a raise. Uh, the big blind does end up folding. The aggressor thinks for a minute before overbet shoving for 770 effective. I immediately react seeing that this player is the same one that busted me earlier with a7 uh, and, and it puts me in a tough spot trying to figure out what he has and possibly if i could ever find a fold here and what i what i do next i'm not proud of but i'll let you guys watch Owen. Hmm. Owen. got jacks come on man Owen. One time. You can't have jacks. You can't have jacks. That would be horrible. Here's one of them.
That's everything, huh? How much you got there? Six. Seven and change. Oh, I have many bags. Oh. And seven. Oh, he's got me. Seven seventy and change. Ooh. That would be so sick. You don't get to bet that thing though. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Still seven. It's about yeah. seven seventy. That would be so sick. Twenty-five <laughs> free flop. Yeah. How much in the pot? That I can't tell you. Can you do like this? Nope. No. Can't assist in the play of the hand. Not with that bad hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that many. It's gonna see more work. The one thing I am allowed to do is complete the pot for the action that's done. So I can take the one tens. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. That would be brutal. I never fold a set. Never ever. I call. Call. What are you doing? No, you're fooling the jack. There's no way he's set. doing jacks. No you don't think so? Jacks. Let's see. He ain't got it. Let's see it. He's not called. He's, he's bluffing with the spades. I finally get to a point where I figure out the player has a spade draw. And it's likely I have the best hand. And if I bust, I bust. Because I cannot lay down a set. As you can see, the table erupted in disbelief that I contemplated a fold. We get a clean run out and get the full double up, which gets us unstuck for the night, up a few hundred. We go back to folding as the whole table reminisces about my horrible contemplation. One player on my right says, if he would have flipped over jacks, they all would have been like, see, you knew he had jacks, why'd you call? It made me feel a little bit better. So after folding for a while, a new player shows up at the table. He seems very interested in me. He also seems to know everyone at the table. Not too much time goes by before he asks how much I have in my stack. Shortly after, he starts trying to get everyone to agree to raise the table limit to 5-5, which at the time, I didn't quite understand why. After a bit, I began to understand. By increasing the limits to 5-5, the table buy-in maximum was raised to the highest stack on the table. So he was able to match my stack at around $1,700 instead of the $1,000 2.5 limit. After everyone agreed, he added on, and it quickly became apparent that I was his main target. We get dealt some good cards, but I mostly end up folding out of position, especially to this aggressive player. In the next one hand, we pick up Jack-10 off on the button. One player limps in middle position, and we open up to $20. Big blind defends, so we go three ways to a flop. A flop comes Jack-10-5, rainbow, giving us top two checks to us and I bet $40. Big blind folds and middle position calls. The turn comes the queen of diamonds. Middle position 60. checks. I bet 60. Middle position tanks for a bit and then says, I think you have ace king. And then he makes the call. In my head I'm really like, ace king and he calls. What could he possibly have on this rainbow board that he calls when he thinks I have the straight already? This makes him appear much stronger than I initially thought, possibly as a set, or uh, I, I don't even know. There's no flush draws, so 
We're already in it. We're gonna see the river. River comes a brick and he checks. This gives me the opportunity to get away with my two pair and, and get to a showdown. Rather than risking being up against a set, I probably missed a value bet because what's the likelihood here that this wasn't an angle? I immediately okay. flip over my hand and it's good. Got that free check on the river without the table That's what he was trying to do. That was smart. It was good. <laughs> he put he puts me on ace king and calls. I'm just like, wow, well, all right. <laughs> Folds around again for a while. And then eventually we look down at ace queen off in the big blind. The aggressive player who matched my stack earlier opens $20 in middle position. The next most aggressive player in the hijack on his left makes the call. The rest of the players fold to me, and I put in the three bet to 65. Raise? 65? Raise to 65. Both players Six call. Points. We'll go three ways to a flop. The flop comes ace deuce rainbow. I check, middle position checks, and the hijack bets $100. I make the call, and middle position folds. River comes the four of hearts. I check again for deception, knowing this player will most likely bluff. He does end up making nearly a pot-sized bet of 380. I played the hand very passively and checked the river with the intention to call any size bet. We make the snap call and the player says, oh, this thing good. Ace queen. We show ace queen and take it down. The last notable hand of the night, we pick up pocket threes under the gun. We limp, and under the gun plus one raises a third. Three players make the call, giving us an amazing prize of five to one. So we obviously make the call on the set line here, five ways to a flop. Flop comes jack a three rainbow, giving us bottom set. The flop checks through. And the turn comes six of clubs. Small blind checks, and this time I try to get some money in the pot with a half pot size bet of 75. 75? 75. Everyone folds, and we can't squeeze any more out of the set. We sit through the last orbit and decide it's time to rack up, securing a massive win on our first night out in Florida. We had two buy-ins at 500 for a total of 1000 and cashed out for just over 2300 on a night. This was a huge confidence boost, being able to climb back after such a bad run uh, with some really decent players and aggressive players at my table. And I think at this point, it was just good discipline to get up and move on to the next night. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
If you did, leave a like and subscribe because I've got some very special episodes coming up, including a live stream, tournament caches, and wild late nights in some of the best 2-5 rooms in the country. See you in the next episode.